so we got this great scene problem that you got this scene and then you got the horizon going like <laughs> this gonna give you a weird rectangular point in the background and that's not quite what you want if you do uh, a C in the background. You would be nice if it sort of faded out towards the horizon. So let's do one thing. Let's throw uh, a light in there. There's a directional light. It's so small. So we're going to make it a bit bigger with a locator scale. Ah, it's pointing that way. That's not the way I want to point it. I want to point it sort of towards the lighthouse and a bit down. Let's see if this, well, this is for a baseline. Yeah, a bit better. Okay, so I'm keeping this. Now we want to, um, we actually need a camera to render from, so I'm just going to create a camera from view. Blink. Now I've got a separate camera, it's the exact same view, and this is, my, this is now my render cam. I can now use my regular perspective to move around and still play with the, that's the render, new render cam. There is a camera shader for Mantle Ray that does a simple depth fade, but we want something that's more like fog. Now, the fog is not available for Mantle Ray, the Maya fog. So we have to go and switch our render over to Maya, Maya software, to get the fog in there. That's kind of silly, isn't it? If you go to the Maya software render options, uh, environment fog, you can create an environment fog shape. Will that render? We're now in Maya software. We kept this as reference. Yes, it will. We have fog in our scene. But do we want to render with Maya software? Let's switch over to Mental Ray. We have fog on our scene. So even though you can only apply it when you have Maya software selected as renderer, you can use it in Mental Ray. And this is just simple depth fading fog. It's nothing complicated, but... Uh, so let's switch back to our render cam and render an image from there. It's not quite right, because we still see the horizon sort of. Um, but it's getting there. Now, how do you ingest, adjust all this stuff? The environment fog is a shape that lives right here in your outliner. And there's a light associated with it. But how do you get to that, the settings for the environment fog? Well, if you just go to Hypershade and find your environment fog material, that has the settings in it. And if you've once you found it in, selected it in Hypershade, you can also see it in your attribute editor and mess with it. Go to a perspective view, create a measure tool, a distance tool, that measures the distance between, say, this point and this point, but the other point is going to be on the camera. So we're going to put one under the camera, under our render camera, and make sure it's exactly at the render camera. Zero, 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 zero. Oh, yeah, we can also zero these out, but it doesn't really matter. And it's now measuring the distance between the camera and wherever I put that other point. And that point is now somewhere hidden in the sea, it seems. It's tiny. Well, if we're located, you can actually I'll just scale it up it doesn't really matter what the scale of this locator is. So we can see it now. We can go back to our camera view and say we want to measure the distance right until sort of the edge. This is where the distribution is. So 275. That's where it should be fully opaque. So we go to our environment fog. The far distance is 275. Near distance, you might not want to start it completely at the beginning. You might not want to have any fog up until you hit sort of the lighthouse. So say, I'm measure it, I'm just going to put the 50 away. And render it again. 
it's getting up to that point. It's still not hiding it completely because it's not getting fully opaque. The downside to this is if you have a sky in there, it will also get completely obscured by the fog. But there are different types of fog. But if you just turn on heights, you get a fog that's only on the ground. And in this case, apparently under the floor. Am I in perspective? No. This floor seems to be hovering above the grid. Is that true? It is slightly. Oh, quite a bit off the ground. So we need to set the height of the environment fog quite a bit higher. And the low point as well. Um, so the minimum height is probably zero. And the maximum height is 10. Let's see if now it pops up over the uh, C. Yeah, now you see it's only at the bottom and it's not all the way to the sky. So you can still see the sky and get sort of a low-lying fog. I could spend an hour tweaking this and get it to look right, but this is basically how you can apply a basic fog in Maya, just get some f distance fading, and you just want to play with all these different things that are available, like physical fog and all the nice settings. You get much nicer fog if you do physical fog, but it also slows you down a bit. This is really dense now, but um, in physical fog you can also throw into the opacity, throw a 3D noise and get all kind of fluffy stuff, uh, which is great. But for animation, not so, because it tends to not work well with camera movements. Anyway, that's the short of it.